All right, guys, thank you so much for being here. This is our last webinar of the week. Um, before we jump into things though, um, for those of you guys that watch the recording and don't watch the whole thing, I wanna at least give you guys a couple cool updates. Um, you guys already know the update with the course. You guys know that um, it's, I will not be able to finish the last lessons until I get back to the States on the 23rd. Pretty much from the 23rd until the end of the new year. Um, I don't think it, it, it shouldn't take more than a couple of days. It's going to take me probably three or four days to finish these lessons and get everything um, edited and put together and then maybe a couple more days just to get the infrastructure of the uh, teachable put together because you, you guys probably don't know like my entire plan with everything but I'm gonna be running my course through Facebook ads and social media marketing and it's gonna be going through a funnel if you guys are familiar with what click funnels are it's gonna be all like linked together with a click funnel so I have to get the infrastructure for that all set set up so that's gonna take a, a couple more days but really I do not think it's gonna take longer than I mean it should not take longer than the first um, I don't really have any plans for Christmas um, uh, I, I really don't have any plans for Christmas. So as soon as I land, you guys know, I'm also relocating from Los Angeles where I've lived. I mean, half lived, right? I mean, I've been traveling quite a bit, so we can say quote unquote live for the past uh, year and a half ish. And I'm going to be relocating back to Arizona. Um, I'm not going back to where I'm originally from though. I'm from Tucson, which is a pretty, I mean, it's a decently small town. There's about a million people there. There's not a lot going on in Tucson though. I'm going to be moving to Scottsdale, uh, which is a suburb of Phoenix, really nice suburb of Phoenix and a lot of high energy there. A lot of, um, Forex traders in the area, a lot of just good, good business moves. Also when I do fly, it's nice uh, that I have the Phoenix international airport right there. So yeah, I'm going to be making that relocation, but I'm probably not going to relocate to Phoenix until after the course gets done. Um, pretty much my plan is as soon as I land in LA on the 23rd, it's like getting into my apartment and just grinding, just staying there, grinding, getting everything done for you guys. Um, that way I can just finish this up, get it done because, you know, I, I, once these lessons are done, it's just a one-time thing for me, but it's just like right now in the current moment over the next two, three weeks, I don't have any, or I guess two weeks now, I don't have any time to do it. I, it's a, it's just some me time right now. Okay guys. But, um, another big update is I just went to one of the largest cryptocurrency conferences in Bangkok guys. I have some so much amazing news to share with you guys uh, probably sometime next week or so. I'll keep you guys updated in the group. I'll do an extra webinar like I used to do with like the crypto webinars. And I want, if you guys remember, if you've been here for a long time, you guys know that on Wednesdays I used to do the normal webinar and then I used to do a crypto webinar before the normal webinar. Um, so I'll, I'll probably do a crypto webinar. So lots of exciting things to talk to you guys and share with you guys about crypto. Guys, I'll just put it this way. I mean, I obviously, you guys know my sentiment on crypto, okay? It's, 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 you know, acquire more of it on these lows. But guys, the things that I was learning yesterday and understanding how the banks and institutions and the big real money of this world is trying to scare you with media, telling you to sell and it's a scam and this and that. Guys, crypto is not going anywhere. Crypto is the blockchain in general, block. I have such a better understanding of blockchain of itself and how it can be used. And it's guys, it gives me honestly goosebumps thinking about it because I feel like we are in, uh, like we are revel in in the beginning of this revolution. And I know some of you guys may not like know a ton about crypto or you know might might have mixed feelings about it. But if you guys knew what I knew about the blockchain network and how just not just like crypto but blockchain technology and the idea of not having like they call it like a double copy of everything out there and it's just like one place that everybody can find everything like it's just it's going to make everything in this life simpler like not just currencies like everything like everything from immigration processes you know like i can relate to that personally because everywhere i travel i have to get visas for and it's like it's like going to the dmv it's like and even with the dmv it's things like with the dmv tolls like medical records like collector like memorabilia anything of value that can be put on the blockchain network it's crazy i could go into it for a long time and that's why i'm going to dedicate an entire webinar to it next week guys um, i'm so excited i took so many notes and that's a really exciting thing but on top of that guys i'm so excited 
2019, one of the things that I'm going to be doing is I am going to be opening up my own brokerage. Um, so I'm going to work with the SEC. I'm going to be working with um, a couple of people, a couple of people all around the world. I, I met some contacts from Hong Kong and some some contacts from New York and a lot of different people at this. I, if all you guys will see it on social media, but I went to this dinner last night with this guy that I met um, at this crypto conference and we had dinner on the 49th floor, like overlooking all of Bangkok. And it was like this beautiful dinner and he's crazy, 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 crazy wealthy. And uh, he owns a brokerage and he wants to help me open up my own brokerage. And, uh, you know, I, from a trader's perspective, it's very advantageous, you know, not just for the money that you make for being a broker, but also being a trader, right? Like having, being able to have like like very, very low spreads, being able to have negative spreads. If you guys, I don't know if you guys even know that there's such thing as negative spreads. You can actually get into a trade and it has a negative spread to it or a zero spread, meaning you enter like I'm, I'm working directly with the liquidity provider. So it's really exciting. There's some, some crazy moves happening and it's guys, this is what like trading is about. You know, like I have so many levels of income from trading, right? I have my personal account. I have the MAM that I trade with profit share. I have the, the uh, private equity that I trade for the firm, the prop trading account. Now I'm about to open up a brokerage. That, then I'm able to release a course because I have a knowledge and a track record. Right? And I'm able to monetize the education side of things. So I have the positive traders business side. I have like with, with all of this going on, guys, five, six different incomes just from trading, you know, just from one skill, leveraging skills. So crazy, crazy, crazy. Um, Robert says, tell us more. So dope went to a Bitcoin event in Miami earlier this year. Vegan Zance is super excited. Jacob says blockchain is going to revolutionize logistics. Absolutely guys. Like I had a, you know, I, I made some gains. You guys know I called, I called some coins at the beginning of this year. We made a ton of money on Tron. You know, everybody talks shit on Tron, but at the end of the day, what we 10 X our investment, right? I put in a lot of money into Tron based off of a tip from a friend, I told you guys the exact same thing. I said, I'm no guru. I'm just well connected with people that have some good information, some good insider information. They told me to buy Tron. So we bought Tron at the end of December, went up 10 times, went from three cents where I told you guys to buy it from or where I told you guys I was buying it from in the next week, went up to 30 cents. We 10 X our investments. I know, I mean, I pulled out a good amount of my investment, like 80% of my investment. I told you guys that I was pulling out that much too and recommended that you guys at least pull your minimum, your seed investment out, all that good stuff. But regardless, made some a ton of money on that. So I've had a good experience in the crypto world. Haven't touched crypto the rest of this year. And we can see that, you know, that's obviously been a good thing. So I, I know I'm diverging a little bit from Forex real quick, but um, yeah, I mean, guys, I'm, I'm telling you guys right now, like, if you, if you are scared, if you're sitting on coins, like, and definitely guys, there are some shit coins out there. Okay. There's some ICOs that were released. I mean, there were tons of ICOs last year. That it was actually interesting. If you guys looked at my stories on either Instagram or Facebook, there was a director of the SEC from the FinTech division there. And she was speaking on, she's from the SEC guys, like the Securities and Exchange Commission. So it, it's pretty crazy to see like the, 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 the figures that are there and actually like seeing this stuff in real life and how many people support this type of stuff. And you know, the big, one of the big topics from yesterday was talking about ICOs and how I see have a lot of people got scammed on ICOs. You know, people found out that it was easy to write up this nice looking white paper that sounded great and was a great idea. And then they would just collect a bunch of money from people and then run off, you know, and that's, that was a big issue with ICOs last year. And that's what scared off a lot of people from investing. And, uh, so there are definitely like shit coins out there. You know, I'm not saying that every coin is amazing. Um, you know, I'm, I'm mostly talking about like the big ones, like Ethereum. I learned a lot more about what Ethereum was. You know, I always knew I liked Ethereum, but I didn't really understand Ethereum completely. And I, you know, now understand that Ethereum isn't even really a coin. It's a technology. Obviously, if you guys have heard, like, heard of ERC20 tokens, which is like a most, a lot of what the ICOs and a lot of new tokens are based off of. Actually, there's different levels of ERC um, coins, there's ES, ERC like 20, ERC seven, something 720 and like a bunch of other ones, but an 1121 or something like that. But I'm not really, I don't, I'm not like really care about that stuff. All I know is that Ethereum is like a technology that other coins can use. It's like a platform that your coin can be built, built off of. So I see a lot of potential in Ethereum, lots of like other coins, but I'm mostly like me personally, I'm looking at like the top coins. Um, uh, but 
guys, crypto is not going anywhere. Let me just put it that way. Okay. If you're like scared, you're holding some Bitcoin, you're holding some Ethereum, you're holding some Ripple, you're holding like any of like the top 15, 20 coins. And you're, you're like thinking oh, maybe I should sell and get out before it goes lower. Guys, hodl those mother effing coins. You are going to make a ton, a ton of money long term. Okay, guys, you guys are going to be sitting here thanking me in 10 years from now. Okay, it's not going to be anything short term. Uh, let me let me just plug in my laptop. Okay, here we go. Let me just plug it in. But guys, I, I'll, I'll, I'll explain more on the, you know, I'll, I'll do a whole webinar about it. It'll probably end up being like a two hour webinar next week that I do on crypto, but be there guys, you know, stay, stay inside of Slack. Obviously I'll up, update you guys in Telegram too. Most likely it'll probably be Wednesday. Um, I, I, I like kind of doing it middle of the week. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll keep you guys more updated. Okay. Anyways, back to what we're here for is uh, crypto. Whoa, that is crazy. It's, do you guys see that? It was like changing between two currencies in the top left. That is, oh, did you, you guys see that? That's interesting. I didn't know. I, I wonder how you can set that if that's an update. Because usually if, if it's in your tab, it only shows you one. But you guys see it's like changing between two. It's going between USD, Swiss, Franc, and GBP, USD. That must be an update or something. I don't know. I'm going to look into that. That's cool. But anyways, Let's get into our, um, into the charts. Let's get into what we're doing. So guys, it's been a slow week, not been a really a slow week because we were able to close out a trade that we've been holding for two weeks, kind of mess with us quite a bit. Um, can it continue to go in our favor? Absolutely. Do I prefer to just get out of this trade because of how much consolidation it's been in and that in specifically the swap guys, the swap is very high. You know, me personally on my account, I was, I, when I close out this trade, I paid $550 in swap fees. Now I closed in enough profit where it was a break even trade. I closed with about $550 of, of profit, which covers my swap, but still regardless, like I'm just, I just, I'm not, not interested in holding this trade any longer, which is USD Swiss franc. So we have no trades open, but we are still 6% up for the month. Now, to end off the week, guys, the main thing is we have NFP coming up. Okay. So in eight, Actually, what is it? Yeah, eight and a half hours. No, 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 not eight and a half hours. Like 11 hours and 13 minutes from right now, we have non-farm payrolls coming out as well as some CAD news, right? Every single first Friday of the month that when non-farm comes out, we also see the Canadian dollar employment rate and unemployment rate and employment change come out as well. Um, and, you know, by now you guys should all know what non-farm payrolls is, right? And if you don't, you need to do a quick Google search and you need to learn a little bit more about it. It's also a topic, one of the lessons that is covered in the course, but non-farm payrolls is essentially telling you the number of people that were added to payroll companies, excluding the farming industry. That's why it's called non-farm, non, the non-farming industry, okay? Or NFP. It's literally what it is. Also along with that, at the exact same time, the unemployment rate, right? That's self-explanatory. And if you look at the unemployment rate, this is actually um, a multi, this is a decade low unemployment, unemployment rate. We have not seen unemployment rate, this unemployment rates, this low in the U S in over 10 years. Okay. You can go back, you can go back in the history. Let's go back. We're in 2018, go back to 2008. It only goes back to September of 2008. It goes past September. I mean, it goes past 2008, but look at this. You see anywhere on here where unemployment rates have been anywhere even near what they are now, which is 3.7%. No, it goes from 4.6% in September, slowly creeps up and up and up. We get into a recession. You guys know the recession, 2008 recession started. We go through a recession, unemployment as expected, unemployment rates go up as we are in a recession. And then as we slowly pull out of this recession and into what we are now, which is a fairly stable, I mean, it's not stable, right? From the outside looking in, it looks stable, but it's, it's not really, really stable, right? At the end of the day, we're, we, it's fiat currency. Fiat currency isn't backed by anything. They just print more and more and more. Our fiat system, and this is another reason why I like crypto a lot more now. I mean, I, I knew this already. It's just, it was just nice hearing it from professionals and experts' mouths that, guys, fiat currency will not last us forever, right? Um, I mean, if you guys have any any uh, history and you should all have, if you're, if you have like more than a year or two years of experience, you should have some type of history of how currency has worked, right? You guys know that we used to have like the exchange system and then uh, we, we printed money for a while. And then after world war two, they needed something and we went to the gold standard for a while. And then the gold standard wasn't working out that well. So we went to something called the Bretton Woods system, which was kind of like a, it was still based on the gold standard, but it was like a hybrid gold standard where the U S held a lot of the gold reserves in the, in the, um, in the world. 
and then all the other countries could exchange their currency for gold because the US dollar was on the gold standard. But then eventually the Federal Reserve ran out of gold and not ran out, but was running low. I mean, pretty much ran out, right? Was running too low on gold. They couldn't continue to give out gold to all these countries. So in 1971, President Richard Nixon um, uh, completely uh, abolished or removed the gold standard, right? And then all of a sudden, overnight, gold, instead of it being worth, you know, this this versus this U.S. dollar, it's now, gold is now on the, on the free market, which is what gold is still on what's today. Gold is on what's called the free market, just like a lot of things are on the free market. And gold is whatever perceived value people want it to be, whatever supply and demand makes that price. So gold went from like $20, $30, $40 an ounce all the way up to $120 an ounce literally overnight because it went from being the gold standard up to a fiat currency where the, the U.S. decided, okay, we're just going to print money. It's not backed by anything. We're going to say how much it's worth. And that's a pretty effed up system. If you ask me guys, you know, it's not a sustainable system long-term. And now it's only 50 years later. And we, I mean, not even 50 years later, you know, 40, whatever, 46, 47 years later. And this system is already failing, right? It's not even been a half a century in the system. This uh, economy is you know, this, this fiat system is already starting to fail. And, uh, you know, you see people like Qaddafi get murdered. If you guys even know who Qaddafi is, he gets murdered for trying to introduce the gold standard. And it's, it's crazy to think the elites of this world, hopefully none of you guys are recording and putting this stuff on YouTube, right? But the elites of this world, um, you know, they don't, they're scared of the gold standard. They're scared of fiat currency going away because everybody, you know, we're talking like Warren Buffett, George Soros, you know, even people behind them, the Rothschilds, the people that actually control this world. Okay. The people that actually rule this world that have guys that have hundreds of billions of dollars, more wealth than Jeff Bezos, who Jeff Bezos says is, you know, on paper, the, the, the wealthiest person in the world. Guys, well, Jeff Bezos is not the wealthiest person in this world. There are people in this world that have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of billions. You know, I don't know if there's necessarily any trillionaires. Maybe there are trillionaires in this world, but there probably are some trillionaires that are super, obviously nobody knows about them except the elites of this world. But there are, you know, specific people, specific, fa and this is, guys, this isn't like an, not an opinion base. This is an undisputable fact that there is a, a group of people, a group of families and people that control this entire world. They control everything that happens. Okay. Now, is it all conspiracy and does it go as far as like elections being rigged and all that stuff? You know, that, that's another topic for discussion, but, but are we talking about the economy at least controlling the world and what gets sent out in the media and what, what people perceive to keep the elites at the, at that status, at the elites, they're very scared of anything, of anything that can of any implications, it's called dips disruptive technology, guys. And Bitcoin and cryptocurrency, you know, relating back to that, is a disruptive technology. Okay, so and there's really no way to stop it. That's the beauty of the blockchain is there's no way to stop it. It keeps it's there's so much uh, importance on infrastructure over application. Whereas you take like the internet, which is built on TCP IP. That's how you're able to send like a text message back and forth, and you're able to surf the internet. It's all through TCP IP but the people of TCP IP didn't make a ton of money, right? It's like the Mark Zuckerbergs and the people that created apps, the people that made Google, the guy that made Google and, and, and Facebook and MySpace and all this, all these different things. Those are the guys getting rich. They're getting rich off of applications built on this infrastructure. But with blockchain, it's like the applications don't have a lot of money, but the infrastructure has a lot more money in it. So there's more value in the processes and it's, it kind of, it's so crazy, but it, it totally relates to Forex because um, I mean, guys, it means it's, it's currency at the end of the day, right? Our trading is based off of fiat currency at the end of the day. So don't think that it's, it doesn't, you know, be having crypto doesn't, um, doesn't uh, affect us. Now, is it something to worry about? It, you know, do I think crypto is going to become massively adopted right away? No, it's probably going to take, you know, a couple of decades until if our world even lasts that long, right? I mean, we have so many other implications. If you guys are familiar with like animal agriculture and the methane that's released from animal agriculture, you know, depleting our ozone layer and creating the polar ice caps to melt, like global warming is a real thing, guys. Like that's not a, sorry, I'm, I might be getting a little political here. Some of you guys may have like, I, I might have some strong views, but at the end of the day, guys, if you really look, this stuff is facts. It's not like, I remember when global warming was like, oh, is global warming a thing? Is you guys remember, this was like, 
you know, maybe five, 10 years, five, between like the past five and 10 years, you know, everybody was like, oh, global warming isn't fake. You know, there's this big movement of, you know, global warming and global warming is fake. But guys, people have come out like it's, it's a fact that global warming is real. Like the, the sea levels all around the world is rising. That's because our ozone layer is depleted. And the biggest threat of that is because of animals. We, we grow animals and we eat all this meat. So I'm, I'm a vegan. I'm not trying to like advocate you guys to be a vegan necessarily, but I'm just, I'm just, I'm just spitting facts, guys. I'm spitting facts that this world may not be able to even be around for many more decades. And, and like our kids uh, may not even be able to like see a full life if something in this world doesn't change. So there's like, there's much bigger implications to all of this guys. So yeah, I have, I have some strong opinions, but it's, it's real guys. Okay. So uh, yeah, exactly. Jacob says facts aren't politically biased. Yeah, guys, this isn't this, none, none of really what I'm saying is politically biased. It's not really an opinion. It's just literally facts guys. This is what is going on with the world. People are blind to this stuff. Um, and uh, I'm blessed to be in an industry where I'm able to be around people. I mean, obviously like that stuff with animal, animal agriculture, that's stuff that I've learned on my own and, and you guys can literally learn about it. Like people are just ignorant. They don't want to learn about it. You know, they don't care about learning about it, which is fine. You know, I don't, not, I don't judge people at the end of the day, right? You can be my best friend and still eat me. And I don't, I don't really care at the end of the day. Like it's, 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 it's you, it's you, it's, it's, it's what it is, but I'm, that, that's a whole nother topic guys. We're here to talk about forums. Okay. So anyways, Pretty much for me, guys, uh, sh long story short is my week is over, okay? Um, I'm not interested in jumping into a new trade. The markets are open for less than 24 hours, um, and I'm not interested in jumping into any new trades 24 hours before the market closes, especially when tomorrow is non-farm payrolls, okay? Um, yeah, I'm, it's as simple as that. I'm just not interested in, in getting into anything. Um, I am a little concerned if I were to get into something because non-farm employment change is supposed to be lower. You know, last time it was 250,000. Now it's supposed to be 198K, which if you guys have heard me talk in the past about non-farm payrolls, anything around 200K is pretty solid. It's pretty good. Um, so that could still be perceived as good for the dollar, even though it's less than the previous, you know, it's, it's still showing like a decline in growth, if that makes sense. And then we have average hourly earnings, which is supposed to actually be up by 0.1%, uh, which is up by 50% from the previous uh, month's readings. And then unemployment rate is supposed to stay the same. So I would, I would actually say if this comes out, that might, this might almost actually be somewhat good for the US dollar. And you know, I'm interested in selling the US dollar. So that goes kind of against my, uh, my fundamental and technical bias. So I'm not Super interesting. Uh, Vegan Gain says AUD USD pulled back to our entry. Yes, we'll look at everything right now. So first and foremost, guys, let's look at USD Swiss franc. Such a wild ride on this pair. This is the last time I'm really going to recap it, but you guys pretty much know that we got in back here. We held it for a wild ride. I'm sure everybody was like, oh, we're getting stopped out. We ended up not getting stopped out. Dropped right back down to our entry. I'm sure everybody was like, even, even myself, I was like, this should be it. We're, we're done. We don't have to worry about the drawdown anymore. It's going to take off. And then unfortunately, goes right back up, right? Flags a little bit, goes right back up. Almost gets stopped out again, right? So we have almost like one stop out here, a stop out here, almost a stop out here, almost a stop out here. So before even the first drop, that was like four almost stop outs. Then we have another stop out in this area. Price comes back down. And then comes back up, almost stopped out again. And then price comes all the way back down to our entry. This was like not yesterday, but the day before yesterday. And then price comes all the way back up. So crazy. Almost gets stopped out again and then drops back down. And then really almost gets stopped out. We got like one pip away from our stop loss. Literally like less than one pip away. I don't even know how we didn't get stopped out, guys. But I mean, I didn't, I didn't move the stop loss. I swear on my mother, I did not move that stop loss. Um, not even a pip. I mean, I don't touch it guys. I let it run and you guys can attest to it. If you have a pro account with FX choice and you have this, you know, your own personal account with pro with a pro account with FX choice, you can attest to it too. We did not get stopped out. This never hit 1.009. Okay. And then went back down and then finally started to catch the movement. And then over the, the last couple hours last night, we moved lower and we closed right around, I think actually somewhere around where price is at right now, somewhere around here is where we closed this trade. And it's because you know, I would forecast that this may stay in consolidation until we have a catalyst to move it out of this consolidation like NFP tomorrow. And if NFP ends up being good, we could very well see USD Swiss franc go right back up to this area. So um, I chose to get out, uh, you know, be for multiple reasons, right? The technicals, the fundamentals, and the swap, right? The sentiment over this trade is I don't like that the swap is there. So um, I, I do, I am a big fan of the daily chart, right? I am a big fan of the daily chart. I like how the daily chart closed, right? If we just look at like raw price action, it looks like it's going to be good. looks like it should still keep going down. But um, I mean, let me, let me just give you a good argument, right? It looked like that same thing was going to happen right here, right? We had a nice little 
um, evening star at the top, nice bearish continuation pattern um, after a nice bear flag, but we didn't see that happen. We, say, we saw this support break. Now, one thing that is different is yesterday we did break the weekly lows, right? We, and we broke last week's lows as well, right? So we broke our lows out around like 99.08 and we went down to like 98.95. So we broke it by about 15 pips um, or almost, almost 20 pips actually. Um, and yeah, actually more than yeah, no, 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 15 pips is right, like 13 pips ish. So I'm still biased to the downside on this pair. And now some of you guys might be asking, I'm like, okay, if you're so bearish on this pair, why did we close it? Well, I just, I, it's got, it's discretionary trading. I just explained it. Multiple reasons why I got out of this trade. Okay. So I am putting this back to red because I'm still interested in it, but am I interested in hopping back into it right now? No. So uh, obviously the dollar is still consolidating as well. I'm not completely convinced that the dollar is ready to come down either. You guys know that I'm bearish on the dollar. I'm expecting this dollar to fall at some point. We've just seen literally nothing but consolidation, right? This is the daily chart. So this is a couple weeks of data right here. And we have just been in nothing but a sideways consolidation with the dollar index. And I'm not really interested in jumping into this trade. I'm not really interested in just even trading the dollar, especially right before NFP. I'm not just going to take a trade just to, guys, here's one thing. I'm not going to take a trade just to get in a trade. Just because we haven't had a trade all week, I need to squeeze in a trade. I have to give out a trade just because we didn't take a trade this week. No, it doesn't work like that, guys. It does not. Trading doesn't work like that. Like if you, you guys got to, got to think, okay, the market doesn't give two shits about our calendar. Okay. They don't give two shits about, Oh, it's Friday. It's, it's okay. Friday is going to happen. So let's give them a good trade on Friday. No, they don't care what time our calendar is. Okay. We set, we have our own calendar. We have our own way of tracking time. The market doesn't care about that. Okay. So it's not like, Oh, we need to get this. We need to get this trade in, you know, no, if there's not a good setup, we don't take it guys. And there's no good trade, especially if there's some high impact news that I'm not interested in trading and we just don't get into it. Okay. So, um, gold, gold, gold's been continuing to rise this week. I've told you guys for a while targets at 1265. So I'm still expecting gold to rise at some point. Now, if we do see NFP good for good for the dollar tomorrow, we could see gold dip one more time, maybe come back to this previous uh, resistance area and then move up higher. And honestly, we may take a buy on gold at that point. If it does make a pullback to around like the 1230, a little bit below 1230, we may look at taking a buy on gold because I'm extremely bearish on the US dollar. Okay. Uh, Robert says, okay, when you get a chance to look at NZD US, he was randomly looking at this pair. I was curious. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so I'm just going to run through everything else really quickly, guys, because I really didn't want to drag this on too much. I think I talked a little bit too much about crypto at the beginning. USD Swiss Frank still bearish. Pound yen, not super interested in, in trading pound yen right now, but I've been telling you guys to watch this pair because the monthly candle made a very big exhaustion candle. We've been pretty bearish for a while on pound yen, right? It's been consolidating, but uh, we're talking like long-term guys from like 2015, the long-term trend has been down on this pair. So um, we had a, a correction through like late 2016 to early 2018. So all of 2017 and the end of 2016, moving into early 2018, we had a bit of a correction phase for pound yen. And then pretty much since then, we've been like trying to find um, movement moves to the downside. But I believe pound yen probably has thousands of pips to move to the downside. We're just waiting for that to happen. Um, dollar yen, similar situation to pound yen. I'm bearish on pound yen overall. Um, you know, I, I, I think we could have taken a sell at the top here, um, at the end of November, but, uh, you know, it, it is what it is. Like we aren't going to, we aren't going to take every single setup. We aren't going to be able to take every single trade. And you're going to go crazy. You're going to go absolutely insane. If you beat yourself up over the trades that you missed or the trades that, yeah, the trades that you missed, just put it simply, right? Just don't, don't worry about it guys. Like if you miss a trade, move on, go on to the next trade, like go on to the next setup, wait for a good re-entry that makes sense. That has a good risk to reward, good risk management, all that good stuff. Okay. Um, dollar yen. Uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's pretty clear what I'm looking for. Like everything guys, you know, there's not a whole lot to talk about on these daily webinars recently because I'm really only focusing on the daily timeframes. I'm, I'm not interested on the lower timeframes like at all. And even moving forward, that's something that you guys are going to notice in 2019 guys. I'm focused on my, I'm obviously focused on you guys. Like I'm still like, don't think that I'm that just because I'm trading the higher timeframes, I'm putting any less any less importance on you guys, right? I wouldn't be getting on these webinars four times a week at the same time, every single week, consistently, every single week, 52 weeks out of the year, doing what? 200 webinars a, a year for you guys, right? If I didn't care about your guys' success. But I'm telling you guys, what makes me the most money at the end of the day, and obviously I'm here, I'm, I'm here to make money, obviously, right? Is 
running a trade copier account, which has a profit share and also running um, my managed account for the, the private equity for the firm that I trade for. That makes me the most amount of money, like way more money than I'll ever make from the business side of Forex. That's why I stopped doing signals. I mean, you guys get signals, right? I'm going to continue giving you guys signals for a very long time, but I'm not, I don't accept people for new signals. I don't care about somebody giving me a little $49 a month in the past. Yeah, it was cool. It gave me a little bit of a, a little bit of a side income, right? Make a couple thousand dollars from my personal trading account each month, make a couple thousand dollars from, um, from managing accounts, make a couple thousand dollars from the biz, the positive traders business side of things, right? Average like 10 K to 20 K a month and have this or you know, or I say average like 20 K a month, like for every month for the past two years that I've been doing things, but it's at the point now, like I'm getting to like big boy money and I'm not trying to like sound, I'm, I'm trying to stay humble guys. I'm not, it's like, it's like a humble brag, right? I mean, it's something to, it's something for you guys. If anything, this should motivate you guys and inspire you guys to get to the same level guys. Like when you, when you have a, tr a firm that goes to you and says, David, we want you to, we want to give you a million dollars to trade with and we're going to give you 50% of what you make on that account. Guys, think of a million dollar account. Think of making Think of making four, let's just say 4%, okay? 4% a month average, right? Some months you're going to have 15%. Some months you're going to have 10%. Some months you're going to have 5%. Some months you're even going to lose a percent or two. Some months you're going to be right in your target of three to 5%. But let's just say 4% that you average long-term. We're talking like year over year over year for decades, okay? 4% on a million dollar account. Do the quick math, guys. What is that? That's $40,000 and you get to keep half of that. That's $20,000. Now, do you think if you can be consistent, you can show consistency for like, let's say a year or two, they're probably going to give you more than a million dollars to trade with? Well, I know if I'm a firm, I am. If I can see that a person that I just gave a million dollars to trade with is doing good with that and they are doing being consistent for one year, two years, three years, however long, I'm going to give them $10 million to trade with. And then I'm going to tell all my friends about it and they're going to give me 10 million and I'm going to have, eventually I'm going to be trading hundreds of millions of dollars and I can be okay with making 2%, 3%, 4% in a month month over month, and I will be sitting in the freaking Bahamas owning an island just doing one or two trades a month, and, and that's it. Like, or, you know, I'm, I'm exaggerating with one or two trades, do a couple trades a month, but guys, that's literally, like, my dream. That's my dream, and it's, it's, it's coming to fruition because I've been consistent with it long term, and I'm not here to say, oh, I'm better than you guys, and this is, guys, every single one of you guys can get to this point, okay? I have no college education. I have no high school education. I mean, I, sorry, I have, I have no... I have no education after high school. Okay, guys, like I am not special. I'm not more special than any of you guys. The only difference between me and, a, and everybody else there that trades Forex and, and claims to make it is that like I'm actually putting in effort, guys. I'm actually growing. I'm being real with myself. I'm not just sitting here blowing accounts in circles. I'm being consistent long term. And it's, I didn't give up guys, guys, like if you're still at that stage where you like, I'm blowing accounts, guys, that is the first thing is you need to get your psychology down. You need to get your mindset down. Don't put a single more dollar into your trading account. If you do not have your mindset down, okay, like straight up or you'll lose every penny of it. Okay. You need to get your mindset down first. Okay. And then secondly is understanding risk to reward, right? Understanding how to set up a trade in a good way. Doesn't, doesn't matter if the risk to reward is amazing. If you're still using bad risk management, okay? If you are not like a robot on every single mother effing trade that you place, you're gonna fail. You're gonna lose every single dollar in your account, guys, if you can't understand risk management and you cannot consistently practice it. Why do you think the statistics are so high of people that fail? Why do you guys think 95% of traders fail long term? Guys, you guys know I, we use FX Choice for the MAM account, okay? I'm, I'm very good friends with the director of operations for the managed accounts. Um, I talk to him like on a pro, I mean, we, we both have crazy busy schedules because of what he does and what I do. And we, we get to talk maybe like twice a year, tw two or three times a year. Okay. And right before I left to Bangkok, my last night in Chiang Mai, um, he called me and we were just talking. I wanted to talk to him about a couple things. Um, and we talked for literally two hours, guys two hours straight with a broker. Like, I don't know anybody else that just like talks to their broker for two hours. And you know, he, I already know the statistics, but he confirmed those statistics that he said nine out of 10 traders blow their account within 90 days of opening the account. Nine out of 10 traders guys. So that is that, like, guys, the broker is telling me that he can see all of it. 
So if you know that, why would you, why, why would you follow the masses? Why would you try to get rich? Why would you try to flip your account? Guys, like it, ah, it just blows my mind sometimes, guys. Like, so, you know, take it seriously, guys. If you want to get to this point where you have people literally handing you multiple six figures, millions of dollars, big boy money to trade for them, and you want to be able to leverage other people's money, first thing is your mindset, straight up, okay? You get out of that get rich quick mindset, you get out of that account flipping mindset, and you learn that Forex is long term, okay? There's other ways to make money online, guys. There's other ways to make money a lot faster online too, right? Straight up, like I know people in e-commerce that, that open, do drop shipping and, and automate a store and do all this and that, and they're making, I mean, they aren't making like crazy good money, but they're making like, you know, 10K a month after, six months of being in, in, in drop shipping and doing e-commerce and stuff like that. And that's great. I'm probably going to diversify next year too. I have a couple friends that are in the e-commerce space and I pay them $20,000 and they will set up a store for me and completely automate it, get virtu VAs, virtual assistants doing everything for me. And it's, it, I don't do anything, literally don't do anything. And it's just a passive income for me. That's another reason why I'm going to be opening up my own brokerage is because it's just passive income for me. It's like, why would I not open up my own brokerage if I have the capital to do so? right? It's, it just, it, it, it wouldn't make any sense for me not to. I mean, it's great for me because I can work directly with the liquidity provider for my own trading. So when I have seven, eight, nine, ten 10 figures and I'm managing a billion dollars, I don't have to worry about these spreads being crazy high and these swap fees being crazy high. I'm not just with like a normal retail broker. I'm like working directly with the liquidity provider all by myself. And so that, that's, that's my goal is guys. So I know you, a, lot, a lot of you guys are sitting here being like, wow, that, that's goals right there. Guys, you can achieve these same goals too. I 100% believe it. If you want it bad enough, you can have it straight up, okay? I just wanted it so bad. I wanted it so, so bad, guys. I, guys, I want to take care. I take, well, I, I already take care of my parents, but I want to do more than just take care of my parents, right? I want to be able to buy them a house, right? I send them money for bills and do all this cool stuff for them, but I obviously, I, I have my own goals and my own things and my own finances, and you know, I don't have millions of dollars yet, guys. I'm not trying to say like I'm this millionaire trader yet. I'm not there yet. I'm managing multiple seven figures, but I myself have multiple six figures, right? And, and if I was to, let's say, buy a house for my parents right now, I mean, I would want to buy them a nice house. It would be a majority of the money that I have, right? So it's not like I am not in a position yet to be able to buy my parents a house. So um, that's one of my goals guys. That's one of my biggest goals. Uh, my parents actually got divorced after 30 years. So now it looks like I have to buy two houses, one for my dad and one for my mom. So, um, it's pretty crazy. And then I have a little brother that's eight years younger than me. I want to be able to send him to any college he wants. If he wants to go to Harvard, he wants to go to MIT, whatever he can, I'll pay for it. I don't, I don't care. So I want to be able to do things like that. Family comes first. But, um, other than that, I want to do big things guys. Um, big, big things. Um, I'm actually going to be like working at an orphanage today and I'm going to be doing some stuff for an, at an orphanage and, and, uh, you know, taking care of over there. And I want to be able to like provide, um, like internet and things like that, like internet access. You guys know that there's so many, I, I forget the statistics. No, it, no, this is actually the statistics guys that almost 50% of the entire world doesn't have internet access. So we're talking like, imagine if you didn't even like know what the internet was. Imagine if you didn't even know what Facebook was. Imagine if you didn't know what any of that is, right? Like you, 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 most people there's, I forget the exact percentage, but it's like more than 50% of this world lives on less than a dollar a day. And so I want to be able to change people's lives, give people that opportunity. And that's the, that's the beauty of the internet guys is not just Forex, not just drop shipping, shipping and e-commerce and not just this and that. There's so many ways to make money online. And, uh, and yeah, Kevin says, please, please, David, if you open a broker, don't be book us. No, I, B booking wouldn't make sense for me because B booking is if some, some of you guys may not know what Kevin is talking about. There's it's called a booking and B booking. Um, B booking is not something that I would do. I mean, morally that's not right. And I mean, I can make a lot of money doing B booking, but at the end of the day, I can also, it's a very high risk because I can have traders that come in and know what they're doing. And, um, and obviously like I can, I can go broke by B booking. So I, it's low, low, yeah, exactly. You can lose a lot too. So it's a booking is where it's at. Uh, Miller says he travels to third world countries and creates schools. Yeah. I mean, Miller, I, I always try to give back in some sort of way. Um, even in Chiang, when I was in Chiang Mai guys, I donated 600. I mean, I know it's not a ton of money, but I donated $600 just randomly one day I was walking. I had 10,000, uh, no, what was it? 10,000, no, 20,000 bot. I mean, I had just taken 30,000 bot out of the ATM, which is like a thousand dollars. Um, cause I was buying Camry equipment and I just gave 20,000 bot, which is 600 USD 
to uh, this, like the, these people that were raising money for an orphanage, right? I try to give back where I can. Um, so I start to sound like Tim Sykes. Hey, I, I don't know much, much about Tim. I know he's done very well in the, you know, penny stocks uh, world. I know I, I've seen him. I know he does. He's doing something with like rhinos right now. I believe he, him and like Will Smith and some other people are doing some really good activist stuff. Um, to stop a rhino poaching for the horns and stuff. Uh, so I know that there's there's some good stuff going on with that. So it's pretty sad, actually. One of those videos like almost made me cry. It was pretty pretty crazy. But um, yeah, guys. Yeah. Also, Jacob says Tim also pumps and dumps his subscribers. Yeah, I've also heard a lot of lot of negative stuff with with uh, Tim Sykes. So I, I'm, well, that that's for another discussion. But guys. Sorry, I know I've gone in a tangent about a lot of stuff about life, about success, about crypto, but I want to finish it off with just looking at a couple of these last pairs. Um, I think it was Vegan Gains. You said that uh, AUD USD has dropped down to our um, back down to our original entry. You guys know that on this pair, we bought AUD USD right here. We held it all the way through this gap and we closed it right up here. I, cho I chose to close. Good thing we closed because it came. It would have just come, came right back to our entry. I am looking for an entry somewhere in this area, guys. Now, keep in mind, there is NFP tomorrow, right? The US dollar is a part of Australian dollar versus the US dollar, okay? So we need to be very careful with this pair and it could drop a little bit lower before moving up higher, okay? But I am looking, I'm still long-term bullish on AUD USD, okay? Don't get that wrong, okay? So um, that is AUD USD, NZD USD. I think Jacob, you asked if I could go over NZD USD. I'm still bullish on NZD USD guys. Um, I'm still looking for buys. I'm really a big fan that it stays in this range. Remember if you have this on your chart, I would highly recommend if you don't have this on your chart, I would highly recommend putting it on your chart. And that's these two blue levels, right? Go on the weekly chart on AUD USD, zoom out. So you can see the data from about late 2015 and look at the major resistance level and the major support level of that range we were in from like, um, we entered it in May of 2016 and exited in May of 2018 pretty much. So a two year range that we were in and that's what we should be focusing on right now in looking for some buys to the top side of this range. Um, and that, that's also what I would look for, okay? Um, so that's, AU, that's NZD USD and AUD USD. Uh, USD CAD, I am looking for, guys, oh my goodness, I can't even like, Guys, I, I, I have to toot my own horn. I have to because it's like so important that you guys understand these large time frames, right? Look at this, 134. I told you guys back when we analyzed this, for those of you guys that were on the team back in early September, guys, three months, okay, 90 days later. And I said, we're, USD CAD is going to drop. It's going to come to this buy zone and then it's going up to 134. That was my target. And look at price, guys. Like there's no denying this. Like you, you, this doesn't happen on accident, guys. This doesn't happen on accident. Okay. I don't just get lucky with a, a setup. Okay. So I'm looking for some long-term sells now on USD CAD. It's getting to the top of our range. It could go a little bit higher. I want to show you guys something. Let me go back on the daily. Actually, if you guys look at all of these extensions, they're about 800 pips, right? This extension right here is about 800. Well, hold on. From right here, about 800 pips. And then from right here to this high, about 800 pips. Right here to right here, about 800 pips. So, I mean, what makes the most logical sense at this point, right? We could go a little higher with this pair. Oops, that wasn't, that wasn't, that was a little too high. We could go a little bit higher on USD CAD. Okay, so I'm being careful with what happens with USD CAD. Now from a weekly perspective, we've got a nice, if we actually measure this correction that we had previously, it was about 1300 pips, right? 1200, 1300 pips. And we look at this current extension, we're at that area, right? We're at 1300 pips on this extension. So there's some confluence. There is some good arguments to sell. So we may look at trying to pick a top at this point. And I am bearish on USD CAD. It would make sense that as the, as the U S dollar falls, USD CAD falls as well. Okay. So that's that. I really want to wrap things, things up guys. Cause I'm not really interested in anything else. Euro NZD, Euro AUD. I'm not interested in either of these pairs right now, but I will look for some more long-term downside. Um, but Euro AUD, even this pair, we closed with 241 pips guys. We literally closed at probably the best point you could have closed at. right. We entered, I don't even remember where we entered. We entered somewhere in here. I don't even know. 
I don't even remember. Some somewhere in here or something like that. We I know we, all I know, all I care about is the profits, right? We we closed with 241 pips. We closed after this gap at the bottom down here. Look what happened. Pulled all the way back up. Really nice exit strategy on uh, Euro AUD. And then USD Singapore dollar. I'm still watching USD Singapore dollar, guys. I'm still interested in finding some shorts on USD Singapore dollar. Um, this is definitely going to be like, like USD Singapore dollar and USD CAD are two good solid trades that look like we could see go lower. Not a big fan of the weekly candle on USD Singapore dollar. So we'll probably give this another week before we even um, have any interest at trading it. And AUD NZD, gosh, AUD NZD. I'm so, I'm so happy for Louis, guys. AUD, uh, Louis took a sell up here at 106.20. For those of you guys that don't, that don't know Louis, you, if you haven't visited my website, go visit my website. He's a co-founder of Positive Traders. Um, he kind of branched off and started doing his own thing. But guys, like I, I was just with Louis in Montreal uh, right before I came to Thailand. Like me and Louis are literally, he's one of my best friends. It's like one of those people, like if you had to trust them with a million dollars for a week or whatever, you know that saying? He's probably my go-to person. I mean, he's an amazing guy, amazing trader, um, very knowledgeable. He's actually going to school for finance. He's about to graduate with his bachelor's degree um, for, you know, whatever you guys call it, wherever you are, four-year degree in, um, in economics and finance. So he's very, very knowledgeable with like the fundamental side of, of the charts and understanding that stuff. And so, you know, we work together to uh, help create biases for you guys. Um, you know, when I, I maybe sometimes I see things that he doesn't see and sometimes he sees, he sees things that I don't see, right? It's really good to have a trading buddy that actually takes it seriously, right? Like Louis is more strict with risk management than he, even I am. It's very rare to see him risk more than 1% on a trade. He's usually like 0.5% or 1% on a trade. So if, if you're looking for trading friends, guys, find people like that, okay? Don't find people that are encouraging you to flip your account, encouraging you to try to get rich quick overnight. Guys, th those people are only going to destroy your mindset and you're only going to lose money with those people long-term. Okay. Uh, Louis will hold a financial market authority li license. Um, not yet, Kevin, he is still working on that. He's, uh, that's, that's something he's working on, um, as well as I'm working on it as well. I'm, he's, he's definitely further into it than I am, but we both are, uh, looking to get our CFA, which CFA, uh, Kevin, by the way, is not just a Canadian uh, uh, regulation. CFA is actually like a global, right? Uh, uh, a global, what's, what's, what am I trying to say? Like a, glo a global accolade. Okay. It's something that is recognized globally. Um, the C uh, does, doesn't stand for Canada. Like a lot of people would, I know Louis in Canada. So people think like the C stands for Canada, like Canadian financial analyst or something. I know people have, have thought that it's that before, but no, C CFA, I, compl I forget the three letter acronym, but it's a globally recognized um, accolade. So um, that is that. Aiken, can you recommend drop shipping e commerce companies? No, I don't, I don't do any of that right now. Like, uh, I've, I mean, unless you have $20,000, Aiken, I only know one guy that sets up shops for people, for tw but you have to have $20,000. So, yeah, cert yeah, exactly, Jacob, right there. CFA, certified financial advisor. There it is, certified financial advisor. So um, you're able to get, you know, accredited investors, which means, you know, you have people that have, there's really no minimum, no maximum that they can't invest in there. It's usually minimum with a, a, a um, accredited investors, minimum a hundred thousand dollars. So you're able to get things like that into your, um, into, you know, to, to invest with you. So guys, there's so, so many big moves. I love Forex guys. I have such a passion for it. I have such a passion for trading and finance and, and helping other people and doing all this. And it's just, it's beautiful to see where everything um, is. Yeah, I mean, Aiken, if you have $20,000 ready to go and, and you're looking for something like that, shoot me a message. If I, shoot me a message personally and I'll, I'll link you up with the guy that, that does the e-commerce. But uh, yeah, keep in mind, it's $20,000 up front. Like it's, it's, a, it's a big investment. But um, it, it, obviously, there's a reason I'm going to do it next. Probably, I, I don't even know where my life is going to go and things are going to take off. But you know, I, I've seen good progress in the e-commerce space. I've seen that it's very legitimate. I know that there are some risks though because I think it's like, technically against Amazon's like terms of condition. You have to have like permission from the drop shipping company that you're drop shipping. I don't know. I don't know. This, this is, isn't a discussion on drop shipping. It's just, just some thoughts, but yeah. Anyways, you guys, this is the end of the webinars for the week. I'll see you guys on Sunday for the weekly outlook. I am happy for you guys. I'm so excited to see where you guys are going, moving. I'm excited for 2019. I'm excited for this course to come out and you guys to go through it. And, uh, yeah, guys, that's it at the end of the day. So I'll see you guys on Sunday. Have a great weekend. If you have any questions, feel free to message me on uh, any sort of social media and I will see you guys on Sunday. Have a good weekend, guys.